and uh, thank uh, again all, all mentioned uh, partners here, uh, uh, particularly uh, the ambassador of Italy, uh, uh, His Excellency Carlo Campanile, who is here with us and who will take uh, the floor in, in a couple of minutes. Um, let me just say one thing before before I uh, in, introduce uh, um, further speakers. Uh, every February, uh, the Italian Forum follows um, year uh, year by year, and uh, of course, this year we also wanted to be there um, at the end of um, of uh, winter. Uh, clearly, uh, the circumstances prevented us from organizing the forum in. Uh, uh, the plant format and also with um, the plant uh, uh, topic um, and uh, but we given the situation that we went through uh, the this spring and the, 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 which is far from being resolved um, of course referring to the pandemic and all economic and social consequences um, um, of um, uh, this uh, global turmoil uh, we are, were even more eager to to do something uh, together uh, this year, and uh, we would like to, um, with this uh, stream of um, um, events uh, titled the Italian Business Forum this year, uh, all taking place uh, in the virtual space, online. We would uh, we would like to um, first of all to be together, to share experience, and to um, to share knowledge about opportunities. Um, and secondly, we know that this format can uh, have some uh, some advantages, and it, it can also have some dis disadvantages. It's um, it, so the more we are focused, the more uh, we will uh, get out of that, and that's why the sessions are, are, are split in, in in three parts. And if there will be more interest, we will also organize the third and the fourth and the fifth uh, session. So uh, ideas uh, for um, doing it. Um, more uh, several times are, are more more uh, more than welcome, and um, we also know that sharing um, experience uh, in times that are so rapidly changing and are relatively unstable and which will definitely pass uh, are uh, particularly um, uh, precious. So um, th uh, these were the this was this was the motivation to um, be together. Um, in uh, this this particular form, um, our um, uh, last uh, introductory speaker is with us. I'm welcoming uh, Irena kuntaric Schieber from uh, the Public Fund of uh, the Republic of Slovenia for uh, scholarships and uh, professional training. The title is a little bit longer. I I, I apologize. Uh, so I will leave it to the director to uh, to for that. And um, uh, at this point, um, I am. Um, I would like to uh, pass the, the words to um, uh, the ambassador of the Republic of uh, Italy to uh, introduce uh, the forum and to officially open it. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Ambassador, uh, please, the word is yours. Uh, thank you. I, I hope uh, that uh, everyone can hear me. Very well. Okay. okay. Um, first, let me um, to address warm thanks to, to, to you, uh, Mr. Giacomelli, for all the efforts and enthusiasm deployed um, for organizing this eighth edition of the Italian Business Forum uh, in this, as you stressed, unusual digital format. Uh, but uh, we all know we are facing on a daily basis where uh, the technical and the logistic problems stemming from the current uh, pandemic uh, context. Allow me also to welcome all uh, participants. Uh, I'm glad to see um, uh, these various uh, Slovenian friends attending this, uh, this event. Uh, Mrs. Irena Kuntaric, um, Mr. Peter Bösner, uh, Mr. Jadran Lenarcic, Eddie Kraus, uh, Andrei Schick, and, uh, and of course, I wish also to thank all um, the partners who made this event uh, possible. Um, uh, I wish to start from saying that uh, we are all aware of the bleak scenario uh, in terms of uh, economic context. Uh, you know that last week Confindustria convened its annual forum and conveyed the strong message of alarm to Rome. 
Confiducia forecasts of a 10% decrease of the GMP at the end of the year are a little bit worse than those issued by the Italian government, about 9%. It does make great difference. I mean, um, and all participants uh, to the annual forum were able to agree that post COVID-19 environment will call for a new and more sustainable approach to growth. Uh, the recovery plan for Europe is not the only uh, gadget in our toolbox. Um, we have ESM, we have SURE, but it's by far the most important one. Uh, I do not want to, uh, to enter into the details of the time and the energy consuming negotiations that took place in, in Brussels in the last couple of months, but uh, what I can say, and, so, um, and this is in line with the title, of the, uh, with the topics of my interventions, Italy and Slovenia partners in sustainable EU recovery. Um, may I say that Italy and Slovenia play the very difficult game in the same team. Um, you know that in May, Premier Janša and Premier Conte both subscribed a joint letter together with other seven EU leaders addressed to the presidents of the European Council uh, to call for radical change of attitude in the traditional economic and financial Brussels policy. Uh, the idea behind this initiative was that pandemic exceptional context required a totally different approach uh, based on exploiting the full potential of the EU budget to help repair the economic and social damage brought by the coronavirus pandemic, kickstart the European recovery, protect and create jobs. This is the spirit, the rationale that inspired the recovery plan. The process we all know is not fully finalized yet. You are aware that negotiations with the European Parliament are still going, and there is a compromise proposal recently put forward by the German presidency to go ahead. This proposal is at the moment fully supported by both uh, Ljubljana and, and Rome. But let me say that the political climate has completely changed today. And may I say that there is a global and shared awareness about the importance to have as soon as possible a fully operational recovery plan. It's quite obvious that each EU member state needs to mitigate the economic impact of COVID-19 in a framework of strongly interconnected economic systems. However, there is also a clear and urgent need to put sustainability at the heart of the European financial system. And sustainable growth is above all green. The economic recovery must be aligned with the objectives of the European Green Deal. The recent proposal to devote the 37% of all the recovery plan resources to support efforts by member states for the transition to the green economy has been agreed by our two governments and goes in that direction. And to my understanding is shared with some different approaches by all EU member states. Uh, even last, last week, probably, you know that uh, um, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development Annual uh, Forum um, identified very ambitious targets and, and they uh, considered that by 2025, the 50% of its entire portfolio loans will be devoted to support initiatives um, uh, in favor of the green transition of our, uh, of our economy. In Europe, it seems to me clear that we all share the idea that the EU funds must go to the areas where they can make the greatest difference, complementing and amplifying the essential work underway in the member states through the elaboration there in the EDU of recovery plans. Now the question mark is how much our two countries are prepared to further cooperate and support a sustainable and responsible recovery, both environmentally and socially. What each of us as diplomats, state officials or 
entrepreneurs can contribute to the achievement of their goals and how can we ensure our future growth in doing that? I believe that it's important to identify new systems and areas of cooperation and new solutions for our future growth. COVID-19 primarily exposed to some of the vulnerabilities and choke points of the economy, but it did not create them. Unless we improve, we will still be vulnerable to the next external shocks. Due to the volatile nature of the COVID-19 crisis, it's important to identify new cooperation and solutions that company did not consider prior to the pandemic. The European Green Deal, which the, Reco the European Recovery Fund has confirmed as the way forward, offers a new perspective and represents the opportunity to accelerate strategic investments that have long been delayed. This acceleration has the potential to act as a multiplier of local and regional economic growth and includes initiatives that range from decarbonization of the energy system, transport, and logistics infrastructure up to circular economy. To rephrase my question about how can each sector of the economy join this economic growth and take full advantage of the possibilities offered. The border between Italy and Slovenia has in recent years not been a barrier to the circulation of people and ideas, and neither is economic cooperation. This spring, we experienced the impact of the restrictions to the movements of people and goods across the border. Now the border is now again a full permeable interface and we should all include this possible circumstance in our ideas by reinforcing the bilateral economic cooperation to fully take advantage of the opportunities in Italy and Slovenia. Tourism is another critical issue. In Slovenia, tourists from abroad dropped by 70% in the first semester of 2020. And now we are paying great attention to the efforts of the Slovenian government, focus on promoting Slovenia's green, safe and responsible destination. Italy is facing the same difficult situation. International visitors were down by 58%, domestic visitors by 31 and 41 of Italians could not even take a vacation this year. The last estimate by any to indicate that only in 2023, the sector should slightly exceed volumes of 2019. So we are facing a very, may I say, bleak scenario, but there's a common ground, common understand that that could also be an opportunity to exploit. Uh, to accelerate process of transforming our economies, our idea and uh, uh, thinking of doing business. So I think I thank once again uh, uh, Giacomelli and all the friends of the Italian business forums, all those who contributed to this opportunity of discussions uh, on a so strategic uh, topics on sustainable materials and on tourism and why I appreciate the new digital formal that I am certain will be able to apply to future occasions of meeting. Uh, maybe also by widening range about sectors and participants. May I say that nothing will replace the direct personal contact with all of you. And so may I conclude my introductory remarks by saying that I'm really eager have this meeting convened in presence as soon as possible, as soon as the safety conditions will be met. Um, of course, um, we are aware that uh, in, in the next couple of days, even today, uh, new measures have been announced by the government in, uh, to, 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 in the context of the national strategy to um, uh, prevent uh, um, the, 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 the disease um, and will evaluate the impact on the economic life and uh, economic uh, relationships between Italy and Slovenia. But um, I may say that there is scope for 
uh, being goes for displaying also some optimism uh, in respect of um, the opportunity um, that this crisis offered to all of us in order to uh, maybe to relaunch and to um, uh, to change the negative narrative that uh, to which we are uh, that we are uh, facing uh, today. So once again, thank you all. Uh, maybe I'm uh, have been too long, but uh, I was uh, uh, eager to uh, to be engaged and involved in this exercise. Thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Giacometti. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Campanile, um, for your intervention. We are all longing, uh, of course, to be together physically. So uh, well, mm -hmm. we, we should know one day that that, we, that day will come. <laughs> so, um, uh, as you said, um, it is um, important to bet on uh, those factors that accelerate innovation that will um, help us uh, recover better from um, uh, this um, unfortunate scenario uh, and what really matters in um, such a development are people uh, here with us uh, we have uh, the director of um, uh, of the uh, public uh, scholarship development disability and maintenance fund of the republic of slovenia um, i will um, later i will tell you more precisely how they cover um, how, how substantially they cover uh, this uh, um, uh, uh, th th these activities, uh, but we are privileged to having um, uh, Mrs. Irena Kurtaric Hribar, uh, uh, the director of the fund, here with us. Um, uh, I ask her to uh, to demonstrate how strong protagonists they are in in this field in fighting the COVID uh, and in making um, uh, the Slovenian environment more innovative. Uh, and uh, in which we can treasure uh, human uh, resources more and how um, this environment can be more um, integrated in, in a wider uh, European Union picture. Uh, Mrs. kuntaric Hribar, the word is yours, please. Uh, thank you, Yuri, for your invitation and I'm glad that you're having us in that uh, forum. So, uh, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Carlo Companile, Ambassador, uh, Ambassador of the Republic of uh, Italy, uh, Yuri Giacomelli, President of the Italian Slovenian Forum, distinguished guests and participants, and of course, dear friends. It's my pleasure to present the Public Scholarship Development, Disability and Maintenance Fund of the Republic of Slovenia and especially its important role with uh, regards to human resource development. The fund runs various programs to promote professional growth and development of knowledge, skills, and also lifelong learning. The programs are aimed at companies, educational institutions, and individuals in order to help them adapt to the demands of the global market, to improve the qualification of employees, to rise the competitiveness of companies, and also to enable cooperation and networking. Slovenia and Italy are probably facing similar challenges. Slovenia is influenced by several negative demographic trends, such as early uh, retirement age, uh, low levels of participation of older employees in lifelong learning and a general decline in birth rates. The fund responds to these ch uh, challenges by promoting prolonged work activity, strengthening the competencies of older employees, uh, eliminating stereotypes uh, types about older employees and improving employers with skills to manage and an aging workforce. This topic will be one of the priorities of the ministry program during Slovenia's presidency of the uh, European Union uh, next year, focusing on the role of older people in the society, specifically in the labor market. But as you know, two years ago, we started implementing 
implementing a program for people who are facing a loss of uh, employment. The main goal is to include them into training programs to facilitate their transformation into a new employment. The fund also implements programs for uh, employees with the aim of improving or gaining new competencies, acquiring new skills, encouraging creativity and innovation. One of this is the program Competence Centers for Human Resource Development, which the, uh, with the program we support and encourage strategic development of human resource management in companies. In this way, in this way we strove the, to achieve a higher level of knowledge and skills of employee. For example, how to cope with the challenge of increased competition in the global market, market technological changes, competence for the future, and with other economic uh, challenges. Companies connected with each other in this program and cooperate by identifying specific challenges and competencies in the field of human resource development. Together, they develop and implement uh, special training programs for the uh, employees. In the past, before the pandemic, uh, we were constantly raising awareness about challenges which digitalization and rapid uh, technological development bring. Talking about how important it is to adapt to rapid changes and to be flexible, fast, responsible in, and innovative. Then came the pandemic COVID-19. Um, and what happened? Uh, the pandemic lockdown and the post-crisis threw us out of our comfort zone and forced us to adopt the dig digitalization. Companies that heard us before and invested in acquiring competencies for their employees have certainly had less difficulties in switching to a different way of work uh, and the use of technologies and had more time to think about how to adapt their business to the current situation and make the best of it. There is no doubt that the pandemic has affected societies and economies around the globe and has probably permanently changed the world as we know it. But on the other hand, this experience has also become an opportunity for concrete changes and changes in our mindset. How to find new ways to be more productive, innovative, creative, flexible, and successful. Through the implementation of our program, which includes also co-financing training programs and implementing training program, programs for companies, we have observed that in the beginning of 2020, there was a dramatic dro drop of investments uh, on the part of companies in the training program as a consequence, uh, consequence of pandemic. But in short period of time, company, companies have, have adapted uh, to the new situation very quickly and effectively. Um, I think this is inspiring. Today, the number of training program, uh, programs is also the same as before the pandemic. This is inspiring also. The method of uh, conducting the training has changed. It takes place exclusively online, remotely. And now they uh, see many benefits such as saving time and money, attending events globally decreased negative effects of the environment by less fuel consumption and, and so on. What we also noticed is that companies are developing more complex and high-tech methods of training. For example, the rise of blended learning techniques. It is important that uh, first the policy makers react on the changes and provide stimulating environment for adapting changes. The fund made this possible by co-financing remote training programs. 
with the program Competence Centers for Human Resource Development, we started actively pro promoting various methods of remote training to spur investments in, uh, in employee development. So we should see the pandemic crisis as an opportunity, especially in terms of accelerating the digitalization and implementation of new technologies in companies. Implementation of design management and circular economy and allow, uh, uh, and allow uh, always put lifelong learning at the forefront of the human development, especially in the light of the aging workforce. I can conclude that the pandemic showed us much more clearly how important people are, how important it is to invest in their development. And uh, Yuri, as you know, lifelong learning from the cradle to the grave. This is my motto. So um, now I will end it my uh, short presentation. Uh, and I hope I will stay with you for next uh, half an hour. And then um, I must go, sorry. So uh, Yuri, thank you. And uh, um, I hope that uh, you will uh, find new ways in this uh, COVID crisis again, again. Uh, and we'll, we will see, together we will become much better. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Irena. Um, um, very much appreciated. Um, yeah, indeed, uh, I understand that uh, you may leave a little earlier. Um, before uh, passing on to the next uh, speaker, I would just like to um, share with you um, how all this is conceived so that you will know. I hope you can see, I hope you can see my slides. Um, uh, as mentioned before, um, uh, the uh, public uh, fund, uh, I, I sometimes I call it uh, public fund for the human resources is um, um, supporting this uh, through uh, the European Social Fund um, and, yes. um, uh, and Slovenia, Slovenia Ministry of Labor, Family, Social Affairs and um, um, uh, Always and, long name. Yeah, yeah. No, always have a, always very long name. So I, yes. that's why I'm having this slide and you'll get all these slides, of course. Yes. Um, and um, uh, and uh, so thanks to you and to all partners for making this, uh, this stream possible. Um, the concept uh, here is um, that we have, um, after the today is opening, we have two workshops. The first one is going to be dedicated on sustainable materials. Uh, uh, it is coming up on the 28th of October. Uh, it is split in two sessions. Uh, so, I mean, before lunch and after lunch. Uh, and uh, the same goes for the second workshop um, focused on sustainable cross-border tourism. Uh, we, th this topic was very dear to us because we understand that uh, the, the tourism along the, uh, the Italian-Slovenian border is a phenomenon. It's, it's a beautiful place to go wherever and however you go at any time. And um, we people made it so unique. Uh, but uh, with the beginning of the pandemic, um, the, uh, this area and the tourism itself suffered particularly. So we wanted to uh, um, take a listen to the experience of uh, the protagonists of, 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 uh, the, in the tourism sector in, in, in that area and uh, draw some, uh, maybe some findings and conclusions and, uh, and, 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 and do some matchmaking in this sense. Um, um, the, um, uh, the sustainable materials session um, will be split in, in, in two parts in a sense that we, we have distinguished companies invited on, on the program who will uh, pitch to, uh, to the audience their propositions related to sustainable materials. And in, uh, in the second half, um, uh, all other participants will expose their interest in, in this. And so it will be some kind of reverse pitching. Um, in, in, uh, in between, uh, we will try to uh, make some uh, evaluation of proposals um, from industry experts and from, from, uh, from the finance uh, industry. And of course, I hope uh, for some conclusions and for some follow-up. So we will also facilitate 
uh, companies to to do the next step uh, those who will express some interest in in, in this uh, the sustainable um, uh, tourism of course uh, the protagonists um, from from the territory winemakers uh, restaurant uh, holders uh, hotel owners but also facilitators and uh, uh, tourist organizations from 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 both um, uh, countries uh, one more um, aspect here uh, uh, which i think it's it's also important uh, it will be a talk among professionals but uh, the general public will be directly involved through uh, journalists uh, from local and regional media who know the places and who know the situation and, and they will be involved as, 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 as moderators so this is the, to, to come back to the program of today um, we would like to uh, uh, go now into the uh, go on with with uh, topics related to the recovery plan and joint opportunities and um, I will uh, pass the word to uh, the director of the Italian trade agency or uh, ICE, um, uh, L'Istituto per il Commercio Estero, uh, uh, the director of the Ljubljana office, uh, Mrs. Uh, Serenera uh, Martoli, who will uh, take uh, the, uh, the floor and I will stop sharing my presentation so she can have uh, perhaps first. Uh, Serenera, please, the word is yours. Okay, thank you very much to our host, Yuri Giacomelli, and good morning to all distinguished guests. Um, as His Excellency the Ambassador mentioned Confindustria forecasts, their definition of this current situation was because it's caused by the double shock of supply and demand induced by the block of activities uh, in industry and services and by the limitation on movements to contain the spread of the virus. And they both produced disruptive effects on economy, while at the same time, the household's propensity to save has definitely increased. Um, let me remind you of some numbers, which I didn't want to uh, write down in slides because, uh, frankly speaking, they were becoming more and more depressing. Um, for Italy, these latest figures show that uh, at the end of this year, we will lose 10 points of the total value produced, uh, while at the same, um, there will be a partial recovery uh, of 4.8% uh, in 21, and these are more or less uh, uh, on world economic outlook by the uh, International Monetary Fund that a couple of days ago forecasted uh, a minus 10.6 for this year and uh, a plus 5.2% uh, uh, in 21. But, uh, but what struck me personally more than the numbers uh, was that uh, Confindustria calculated that this contraction will bring our country back to the level of 23 years ago, something that uh, uh, not even the uh, subprime crisis of uh, 2008 and 2009 managed to do. Uh, so Italian export of goods uh, is expected to decrease by 14.3. Uh, this year, rise back uh, uh, of 11.3 in 21. And um, at the end of lockdown in May, uh, the huge measures launched by our government to face the emergency, which altogether account for more or less 100 billion euros, which is, uh, uh, it means more than six uh, points of our GDP, caused uh, a rise in demand, which in many sectors had uh, disappeared and relaunched industrial activity in the third quarter. But however, that could not fill yet the loss of the first two quarters, which are more or less uh, a minus 17, uh, almost 18 percent, 17.8 of our GDP. In services, uh, the recovery is going slower. During summer, while other activities were restarting, Italian uh, uh, economy faced a sharp uh, decrease in foreign and domestic tourists, as has been already pointed out. So 16 billion euros of tourism expenditure just vanished. And unfortunately, 
they are expected to rise to 68 billion at the end of this year. Um, for Slovenia, uh, Umar uh, autumn forecast uh, predicts uh, a minus uh, uh, 6.7 uh, points of GDP uh, this year and a recovery of 5.1 next year. But uh, uh, economic activity should not reach the pre epidemic uh, uh, level until 2022 which is substantially in line with the recent uh, uh, preview of the International Monetary Fund, which also preview for Slovenia uh, the, the safe figures, but they pointed out that uh, Slovenian national budget is not expected to return to a minimal surplus before 2024. Foreign demand uh, in Slovenia should perform uh, uh, at a minus 0.2% in terms of uh, import from their uh, major trading partners, uh, with a rebound at 8.4 next year. So all those signals uh, um, indicate that the resumption of activities next year will be strong, but uh, uneven and incomplete. Talking about trade, the data recently processed by the Slovenian uh, Statistical Office uh, indicate that the most significant decline in trade was recorded precisely with Italy, which in the first semester of this year went down uh, of 23%. Despite this situation, our country confirmed itself as the second country of origin of Slovenian imports and is still the fifth investors uh, with a quota of uh, about 7.9%, mainly as usual in the financial and uh, insurance sectors. In this scenario, uh, to bridge the new gap, the traditionally very good economic relations between our two countries invite us not only to find new fields of cooperation, but I would say also to revitalize the existing ones. Uh, and among the existing cooperations, uh, I would like to focus on the good job that Italy and Slovenia are doing uh, uh, within uh, the cross-border European Interreg program, and it's already 30 years now, uh, which is an increasingly solid and active collaboration will, um, that I think will also help us reach the goals set by the Green Deal, the European Green Deal, by promoting innovation and sustainability. I also think that uh, uh, to the two capital uh, subjects that the Italian Business Forum is going to discuss this year, uh, circular economy, sustainable material and tourism, both in the frame of environmental sustainability. In terms of uh, bilateral economic cooperation, uh, we could add infrastructure that His Excellency the Ambassador already mentioned. Uh, Slovenian government recently issued a list of 187 projects for 7.7 billion euros. And we are planning at the beginning of December uh, a web mission, it has to be a web mission, uh, of Italian association and companies that can enter in contact with Slovenian institutions and be ready with their know-how when the specific project will be launched. On the other side, uh, in terms of uh, uh, promoting Italian export, which is my institutional core business, I think that uh, while uh, uh, the main sectors of commercial exchange still remain industrial goods and energy, which account more or less for 75% of the total, um, there is still room in Slovenia for Italian consumer goods. And I mean those more linked to uh, the fashion ecosystem, such as clothing, uh, footwear, accessory, and so on and so forth. Where we are the second Slovenia supplier with a market quota of 18.8%. Uh, and uh, uh, 
the other one, apart from commercial goods, uh, should be agro-industry food products, where we are the first supplier, but with a market quota of only, I would say, only 15%. And thanks God for Italian wines, which account for a market quota of 28%. Anyway, in, uh, I think that without any doubt, uh, uh, in both sectors, there still is large room to introduce new products and new brands into this market. This is why next year we will organize uh, uh, two important promotional projects with the biggest Slovenian retailers. Uh, first of all, to bring uh, uh, new Made in Italy uh, products but at the same time to help the sell through of the retailers for those articles that they have already in the stores. Last but not least, let me spend just a few words on a new tool that our Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation recently launched in the support of the Italian Trade Agency and Casa Depositi Prestiti, which is the uh, Italian Development Finance Institution. Um, it's a new website, www.export.gov.it, specifically intended to help those SME who want to approach foreign markets. It's new because uh, uh, each Italian company can easily find, uh, uh, for the first time, in the same place, all the financial and, proportion and promotional information uh, from the ministry, from uh, the Italian trade agency, from Sace, from Simest, uh, and uh, in the next future also from the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, to help uh, uh, its, uh, its export. Um, and they are re easily reachable by just a few clicks. So, uh, of course, the website contains also all the information concerning doing business in Slovenia provided by the Italian Embassy and by my office. So I will, uh, I wish, uh, I will conclude wishing uh, to all of you a good continuation uh, for the next two sessions of our forum. And I thank all of you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, for your intervention. Um, and uh, of course, uh, many thanks to Ice for being uh, an active um, uh, organizer of uh, this event for, for from uh, the very beginning and for the support uh, this time uh, as well. Um, I am wondering when when we uh, follow the uh, uh, preoccupying numbers of uh, of uh, the economic downturn, uh, I. And also the expectations for um, uh, the rebounds. I wonder how much we can rely on that, uh, given the fact that uh, um, it's really hard to predict even for one quarter how the situation will will, will evolve. And uh, I'm saying this between uh, you, Saranella, who you were very precise, and then you gave a very good panoramic over over the situation, and uh, Mr. Peter Vosner, who is <laughs> going to continue and uh, who um, will uh, try to identify um, uh, further opportunities uh, that, uh, that lay or, or ahead of us, or maybe some, some warnings uh, for things um, to come. Uh, Mr. Volsner is um, um, the government advisor, uh, policy expert and researcher at um, uh, the, um, um, the Office for the Macroeconomic Research of uh, the Republic of Slovenia. And um, I am, uh, I am uh, going to pass uh, the word on him. I believe he will uh, also share his, uh, his screen. So, uh, Mr. Vosner, please, the word is yours. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you very much. And thank you for everybody for uh, being here um, for this uh, opportunity. Um, indeed, I, I work now at the, at the Institute for Microeconomic Analysis and Development, as Madam uh, Marzoli mentioned before. Uh, Yuri, on your um, on your challenge, you know how how um, how reliable those forecasts are. Well, they are they are very open, I would say, but primarily because they depend on what we will do, and that will be part of what I want to um, address uh, today. Um, and I will build on the in excellent introduction 
by His Excellency uh, Mr. Campanile, who said that Slovenia and Italy played in the same team uh, during the negotiations on the EU level. I was also a member of that same negotiating team. Um, and I would argue that that is the kind of the spirit that uh, both of our countries should pursue. If, if we want to build on opportunities that Irina was referring to, but also of everybody else. Um, you know, I, I, I like the words that also His Excellency men, uh, mentions uh, uh, strategic investments, uh, not just new, also the ones that should be revitalized, uh, as Madame Marzoli said. Um, and I would argue, you know, going beyond the logic that has been pursued until now, for example, by way of cross-border cooperation programs. I think they're uh, an, an excellent, I've, I've been working on that for, for, for three years personally as well, so I know it very much in detail. Uh, but I, the, the, the message I will try to, to, to kind of put forward, the thesis I would put forward today is that we should try to go towards more strategic, towards more forward-looking, and beyond trade kind of relationships. Uh, you know, trade is of course essential, it matters, it shows in the short-term statistics, but in order to really make this a kind of a stronger cooperation, I think we need to go beyond that kind of, uh, you know, short-term, you know, selling, buying logic, but, you know, kind of thinking about what we can do on innovation, on joint development, research and development, especially given that that kind of relationship requires trust, which we know is something that needs to be worked on. You know, history does not play in our favor necessarily. So I think that calls for even more determination and vision on all sides. And that's why I think the events like today's are, are, are really important. So if you allow me, um, I prepared a, a, a short presentation uh, that, uh, for today. Um, I, I was asked to talk actually about um, e-recovery uh, plan and funding landscape. And let me give you a couple of thoughts um, on, 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 on that. Let me just see whether that will work. So these are a couple of, let me first start by, um, you know, what we, what we achieved or what the EU has achieved. And I will not just refer to the resilience and recovery facility, but also to the cohesion policy funding, which in both of our countries is very important. So globally, we're speaking about in the range of 150 billion euros in Italy and 6.6 .6 billion uh, euros in, in Slovenia. So obviously that rises, raises expectations and, 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 and kind of, uh, you know, uh, catches a credible amount of, of attention. So just, you know, two, two ways of looking at it. The blue line, the blue columns here are comparing that these amounts of research, uh, resilience and recovery facility relative to whole government so this is all public government expenditures on all levels for economic, affair pur economic affairs purposes. And you can see that in that sense, Italy, that's almost as much as Italy invests per year, everything that has to do with economic affairs. In Slovenian example, this is slightly less, but if we take the amount jointly of um, resilience and recovery facility and cohesion, um, on a per capita basis compared to the EU average, then it's, compared to Slovenia is actually, uh, you know, it, 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 we are actually looking per person to a even greater possible investment, which I would interpret in the way of, you know, what is the opportunity that we can get out of it? So this is what the commission is saying, that these are the kinds of things that we should be looking at. Now, things to underline here is obviously it's about investment, but it's also about reforms. Secondly, it's about lasting positive impact. So I think the message there from the Brussels, from the European Commission is, you know, think about the longer term. Don't think just about the short term, which I think is a great threat uh, that, you know, both of our governments, indeed, as every other government will be caught, especially if we would unfortunately go into the second wave. Thirdly, uh, the priorities in terms of substance that come from Brussels are that, you know, it should be focused on what is our most pressing challenges identified to the European semester and country specific recommendations. But then three things are underlined, green digital transitions, growth and jobs. And, and I think this is a kind of a question mark because the third, the third dimension is economic and social resilience. And that can, of course, mean a lot of including short-term things, which I'm, as you can see by now, rather afraid of. Uh, the ambassador already referred to what that should translate to. From Brussels' perspective, that should translate to 37% of expenditure that should go for climate and 20% of 
uh, resilience and recovery facility that should go um, for digital. Now I've negotiated, uh, I've done three rounds of negotiations of, with the European Commission, and I think there is quite a big room for maneuver. So I think it, it comes down a lot to what our countries will actually propose to Brussels. So by saying that, allow me to, to walk you through a couple of um, dilemmas or challenges that I see along this way. The first one is having a long-term versus a short-term perspective. Now, just today, you know, we are having these record numbers of, of COVID cases, so that we are again coming in this really kind of a survival mode, which, which uh, is, uh, you know, it, it's not surprising. But when we discuss what to do with these kind of funds, I think we should be, we should be paying particular attention to the longer term. So what I mean by that, you know, it's, uh, Madame Rizzoli mentioned, you know, the lists that are being prepared of investments that all these our countries should, should, should be should be should be doing in in the coming months and years, and even if we think about building only, uh, you know we should think about what kind of buildings we are building. Uh, so here are two examples. On the left, you see what is being under construction right now here in Ljubljana. You know it's a, it's a cultural uh, facility. You see a huge investment of 33 million euros that could actually you know could be at the same time reverted to. You know, we could have like four, over 400 young researchers for that amount. And I think this is the kind of, you know, these are kind of a trade-offs that we, that we should think about. But even if we go for the building part, it's not just, you know, uh, you know, kind of investments that increase the quality of life. On the right, you see a plan of the engineering faculty that we badly need also in Ljubljana that I think should be very high on the list. Indeed, it is on the list, but it's the balance of those kind of, what kind of investments we will go for. But this is just the building part of the story, which I think should not be at the forefront. I would very much agree with what Irina kriber kunterich said before, you know, lifelong learning from cradle to the grave. And that is especially relevant in times of fourth industrial revolution. Here below, you see two analyses. The left one is by uh, uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers on the share of jobs that are at high risk of automation. Slovenia being the second from the top and Italy being the fifth from the top. So given the structure of our economy, given what we do, I think we're both very much under threat if we do not invest and tr transform our, our, our economies. And if we do, on the other hand, of course, the impact on GDP will be huge. This is just from a study that came out three weeks ago, uh, commissioned by, by European Commission and, and done by, uh, by McKinsey, that shows you know we could be looking at more than 1% GDP acceleration per year if we do the homework. Now, what that homework is, I would argue, is really think about the, the, the modern 4.0 ecosystem or however you want to call it, how to react to the age of collective intelligence, as, as, as the economist is, uh, was referring to in the beginning of this year. And in order to do that, of course, there are so many things that one has to do that has not to do with, uh, you know, uh, roads and, 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 and roundabouts. So this is the kind of uh, uh, kind of the, the, the first challenge or dilemma that I think our, our governments will, will be looking at. The second one is, of course, that we already are seeing a situation of very differentiation, differentiating starting position and also impact. Um, this is from, um, from another McKinsey study, you know, making the assessment of what we could be looking at on the regional level in our part of the world. And as you can see, the impact in terms of what we can see, what we can expect in the years to come is very unequal. Um, just to, so that you, you can't see it, but blue is good, basically. Uh, gray is already negative uh, job growth and orange is really bad. So, you know, you can see that, you know, we are not looking at a positive scenario if we do not invest heavily in that kind of transformation. And of course, uh, to make things worse, uh, the impact is expected to be unequal also. This is an analysis from the OECD. Um, if you look at the robotization impact, you can see a more negative impact on lower income regions. So that's again negative. And of course there is, if I, look, if I take the, the example of the starting position, the structural uh, uh, a situation. These are the inner areas of, of, of Italy that are, you know, getting a lot of attention in terms of the digital divide, which is, of course, there, and it's not my, much different in, in Slovenia either. 
uh, and I haven't even come to the to the to the impact of of, of COVID, which will of course be very have a very unequal effect. Uh, uh, you know, in general, you can say you know the weaker you are, the, the the stronger negative impact one can one can expect. So that's something that will be of course very challenging for 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 for, uh, for, for the governments again. But also, you know, looking just as a, to reaction to survival logic, bouncing back rather than forward, I think would be a wrong would be a step in the wrong direction. Now, thirdly, I was arguing for strategic investments uh, in the beginning. And I, you know, sometimes we have this logic of how we should be looking at to increase our, uh, you know, self-sufficiency, stuff like that, uh, you know, how trade, uh, deglobalization discussion. I think that's very, very dangerous and very, very wrong, especially, you know, clearly for, for in the context of the EU. I think to the contrary, you know, the, the, the resilience is increased by getting more internationally integrated and that requires strategic thinking that uh, I would be arguing for today. Now, last year we've been to Rome, we have presented what our, our priority areas, this is being upgraded, but I would not expect significant changes in terms of where our economy and investments in research, development, innovation will be going towards. But let me kind of signal a couple of uh, uh, areas that I see as, as very uh, perspective, also looking at who the next speakers will be. So one, for example, is cooperation with Area Science Park, just uh, you know, across the border, you know, it's something where you know it's not just because it's uh, it it simply makes sense. It makes sense for 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 Friuli Venezia Giulia. It makes sense for Slovenia because if we make complementary investments, for example, in research infrastructure, we both will be able to do more. Which is of course not the end purpose. It's not about publishing science, uh, you know, scientific articles and papers. It's about actually developing something which will contribute to innovation, i.e., you know, improved products and services that will go to the market. And that is something that we have been working in the framework also of the Vanguard Initiative. It's something where we could connect, uh, you know, develop pilot and demonstration projects. Uh, it's something that we have been uh, also in close contact with uh, Lombardy region. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that I would really hope that we can do something because there are additional funding streams from Brussels, particularly for that kind of investments. And third example I would mention is, uh, you know, it's a specific Slovenian thing, uh, you know, next year we will be uh, a European region of astronomy where, you know, also it was mentioned, uh, food is something that we, both of our nations cherish very highly, but I think we should think beyond the obvious, you know, it's not just about these small co uh, cooperation projects, we should think about, you know, top level uh, 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 high end tourism to connect Venice and the big players, how we could you know, do more on, on, on joint promotion of the region as a whole. It's that kind of new dimension of thinking that I would refer to as uh, proper strategic thinking. Now, given that I'm slightly, uh, that I'm slightly over time, let me just uh, wrap it up. Um, so of course it's, it's too late, the discussions are ongoing. The deadline to submit that recovery and resilience plans is uh, 30th of April. And at least on our side uh, with Professor Mrak, we have put forward what we consider as a, as, as a proposal, which would in our view go towards this forward-looking forward -looking perspective. Now that is, uh, I have to, you know, our government has actually already adopted the first draft of the national uh, uh, recovery and resilience uh, uh, fund, but it's still not, it hasn't been presented publicly, so I can't comment beyond uh, what was said. It's, uh, for, at this stage, it's impossible to, 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 uh, uh, to make an assessment uh, of it. So I'm looking forward to it, but what I would say is, and this is a message not just to our government, but in, 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 to, to kind of uh, uh, bring home the, the, the argument I was trying to make, the point will be, of course, there will need to need to be balances between different types um, of investments and approaches and giving appropriate attention to human resource development, et cetera. But the key, I think, difference will be whether we will manage individually and jointly, and here I also mean Slovenia and Italy and Italian regions and stakeholders in particular, to actually do a forward-looking perspective to take, to, to, to kind of anticipate what's coming, react accordingly and do some hard but necessary strategic uh, investments. That would be um, the way how I see uh, the, 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 the challenge of the present situation. I just hope that this uh, event today will contribute in, in that direction. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Uh, very insightful. Thank you very much. Um,
uh, particularly for mentioning uh, many of um, the opportunities where uh, we uh, can continue uh, playing in, 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 in the team. Um, and uh, let me just say that um, Area Science Park uh, is among speakers on, of the second day uh, dedicated to um, sustainable um, materials uh, in, in this uh, stream of uh, the Italian Business Forum. Um, the, there will be some, there will be time for questions. So I'm sure there are many questions uh, uh, for this. And the, because you, you opened, you really challenged uh, the audience um, uh, well, how to uh, thinking a little bit uh, wider and uh, how, to, uh, how to think long term, uh, open new job opportunities, etc. Et uh, so we are approaching uh, to um, the time uh, for uh, the debate, but before we, we get there, I would like to uh, offer uh, two more speakers uh, their time to uh, present. Uh, the first uh, next uh, is um, Stefano Cerrato, um, the, uh, the director of the Italian Cultural Institute. Uh, we know that uh, actually culture comes before business uh, right uh, and that's <laughs> that's the normal way to go and um, we view this aspect as a very important uh, component um, of um, uh, the bilateral exchange um, uh, an important uh, medium for uh, being together knowing each other and uh, 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 building trust and um, uh, giving an accent to what really uh, matters in, in, in life. So um, the, the cultural sector has been hardly hit in, in, this, uh, in these last months. And um, so a part of the recovery also uh, di directly addresses um, the cultural sector and it's uh, very much uh, linked to innovation and it's very much linked to tourism. That's why uh, we are looking forward to your um, presentation. Mr. Cerato, please, the word is yours. Good morning. Good morning, Ambassador. Good morning, Mr. Giacomelli and the friends of the Italian Slovenian Forum. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, this year, too, the Italian Cultural Institute uh, is a partner of the annual business forum. I'm very glad that we can have, even if, with this new format, uh, this year uh, appointment. Uh, I would like just to share some uh, ideas from the cultural perspective, uh, a glance at the bilateral cultural relations in the context of the new crisis and in the context of the recovery strategies that are being applied in Italy. Uh, Mr. Giacomelli said that uh, a culture comes before business. Well, actually, I would also would like to say that culture is a business. And uh, uh, I would uh, want to share with you some numbers, not too technical, but uh, uh, it needs to be said that uh, uh, cultural and creative industries uh, are an important sector of uh, Italian economy. I will start from the Italian point of view. Uh, cultural and creative industries are defined by UNESCO as all the sectors um, of organized activities whose principal purpose is production or reproduction, promotion, distribution, or commercialization of goods, services, and activities of cultural, artistic, or heritage-related nature. This means that we are talking about, just for example, architecture, uh, publishing, artistic crafts, uh, cultural heritage, uh, performing and visual arts, uh, festivals, film, music, uh, publishing industries, and so on. While the cultural and creative industries uh, definitions often include high-end industries such as design, industries protected by intellectual property rights. So if we look at the numbers in Italy, uh, cultural and creative industries uh, generate an income of approximately 96 billion euros and employ 
1.55 million workers, which is 6.1% uh, of the total workforce in Italy. If we want to include also some sort of indirect income, like a tourism or services generated by these cultural activities, then we arrive to uh, an income of 265 billion euros, which is 16.9% of the national value added in one year. And these are data uh, published in uh, 2019 by Fondazione Simbola and Union Camera. So we are talking about a very big sector for Italian economics. But uh, what happened um, during the COVID-19 epidemic? There aren't uh, systemic data yet. There are some specific researches on a regional level. For example, the region Emilia-Romagna uh, started uh, a survey of what happened to the main uh, cultural actors in the region. And uh, above all, of course, during the months of the lockdown, data were tragic. In some sectors, the decrease, the decreased income was about 80% compared to the same year, uh, to the same period of uh, last year. So the situation was really tragic and uh, as it is easily understandable, uh, above all for sectors like live events, cinema, cultural tourism, all activities which rely on people's mobility. So what was the response of the Italian government? Well, mainly it is contained in the so-called Decreto Cura Italia, uh, which is uh, the legislation number 18 of uh, 2020, which uh, uh, originated an emergency fund in support uh, above all of live events and cinema. Uh, I'm talking about 130 million euros administrated by the Ministry of Culture in Italy. And this was meant as an immediate support to the workers in these most affected sectors. But uh, there is also a, a more, this was the emergency, but there is also a more strategic approach uh, and I would like to focus above all on what uh, is done by the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. Because the Decreto Cura Italia uh, also um, generated a, a fund for uh, integrated promotion abroad, reserved to uh, embass embassies, uh, cultural institutes, Italian trade agencies abroad. These funds uh, imply uh, a shift in focus on what we do every day uh, in our activity promoting the Italian uh, cultural sector abroad. Because before the main focus was centered on the promotional aspect. We are here to promote and present Italian excellencies in all the cultural sectors that I mentioned before. Now the, the context is, is changed and above all in the first months of the crisis, the main focus shifted to the support of the most affected sectors and the most affected uh, workers. And uh, this, is, um, this can be shown through a case study, which is uh, very interesting. Uh, this summer, the, minister, the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, supported uh, the event Estate all'Italiana Festival. Uh, festival uh, Summer the Italian Way, 
this was a series of uh, um, cultural live events held in presence uh, in different venues uh, all along the summer in cooperation with the main Italian uh, music and theater festivals. These were events in presence, but uh, of course with a very, very limited audience. So what was the added value of this support by the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Uh, Based on a special agreement with the association Italia Festival, all these events, concerts, uh, lyric operas, uh, theater presentations were uh, filmed and uh, uh, made possible to be viewed online uh, in many cases live, in other cases uh, with uh, recordings of these events. The, the ministry so funded the festivals, who, which uh, um, had a very lower income from selling tickets in, in comparing to, to the previous years. Uh, this economic support by the ministry integrated the revenue of the festivals, made them possible because uh, they were at risk this summer. And at the same time, uh, made possible to reach an international uh, audience through the web. Uh, this new approach uh, was successful because the numbers were excellent. The participating viewers of these events uh, were many. The numbers are, are impressive. And, and this is a good example of this uh, um, shift in, in strategy. Uh, promotion goes hand in hand with the support of the most affected sector. And uh, mm, one of the most important points is that these uh, projects uh, must be developed also at the local level. For example, for us in Slovenia, keeping in mind the main concept of integrated promotion which means that culture goes hand in hand with the business and science. The three axes of the, these uh, new strategy, in fact, are cultural event, uh, scientific uh, cooperation, and support to business. This must go hand in hand more and more. So what uh, are we doing for the foreseeable future? There are many projects and activities that uh, here in Slovenia we are preparing for the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021, uh, for which uh, uh, also enterprises could join us in uh, projects. Uh, these will be projects held mostly online, of course, we know what uh, is happening now, uh, but uh, uh, there is still room for uh, integrating our efforts and to participating together in what we are preparing. I, I, would, I would try to share with you a list of the uh, projects that we are working on jointly with the Italian Embassy and the Italian Trade Agency. Uh, let me see if I manage to, to share uh, my screen with you. Okay, I hope you can see this, uh, this list. We are working on projects on uh, design. Uh, the annual Italian Design Day this year was postponed but we are planning to have it uh, at the beginning of November. Uh, enterprises interested in this sector can join with video materials and uh, data that they would like to share with us. There will be a main lecture connected with us from Italy, but uh, we are thinking of this event and the one in 2021 as something that uh, could be uh, gladly integrated with insight from uh, our friends of the uh, Italian Slovenian Forum. Another important focus is on agri-food sector. 
uh, an Italian cuisine week is still in the plans by the end of the month of November. And I, I know that this is an important sector also for many partners of the Italian Slovenian Forum. In this case too, we are very open to, to cooperation, joint presentations and joint online events. As for the beginning of 2021, uh, we still have in program the Research Day, uh, which is uh, an annual uh, bilateral uh, meeting. Uh, unfortunately, this year it has been canceled, but we are working on these for next year. There are some contacts uh, with uh, Bologna and the Emilia Romagna region. Uh, I hope that maybe with uh, Institute Joseph Stefan uh, there will be the possibility of developing this uh, cooperation with, uh, with Bologna and Emilia Romagna. Uh, so we have a bit of more time to work on this. Uh, live events, of course, uh, in winter are less likely, but uh, we're working a lot uh, on uh, web platforms in order to allow uh, cinema screenings, uh, music, live, uh, live events. Uh, and these are open also to uh, interaction among Italian and Slovenian uh, cultural actors. Uh, contemporary arts is one of the sectors that we uh, work on. And maybe it would be interesting for you to know that uh, an important cooperation is going on among uh, Moderna Galleria, the National Museum of Contemporary Art, and the Maxi, the Museum of Arts of 21st century in, in Rome. Uh, Moderna Galleria will bring a big exhibition on the art of ex Yugoslavia to, to Rome and uh, uh, is expected to reciprocate the hospitality for uh, projects coming from Italy and from Maxi. And uh, a lot of work uh, is uh, uh, for us is focused on uh, publishing industries. We have uh, funds to support uh, Slovenian publishing uh, enterprises interested in uh, publishing Italian literature and Italian books in translation. Uh, these funds have been uh, increased very much this year. The number of publishers we are working on is uh, uh, three times higher than in the past years. So this is a sector where a lot can be done and there are funds to do things. That's it. So I'm closing with uh, an invitation to cooperation to all the uh, people from the, the cultural sector, from the economic sector that would like to join us in this integrated approach, stating that uh, next year we are trying to work, uh, maybe for the first time in years, uh, on uh, uh, brand identity for these uh, promotional projects. Uh, next year uh, we will celebrate 700 years since the death of Dante Alighieri, and this will be our main focus for last year. And as I said, it will be like a brand identity for the bilateral uh, cultural activities that we are planning. This is an open invitation. I hope that you are interested. And I thank again, Mr. Giacomelli for the invitation. Thank you very much indeed. Very impressive. And of course, uh, the challenge is uh, accepted. Um, we know that Dante uh, took some uh, inspiration also from the, uh, the, these territories uh, for his uh, the Divina Commedia. Um, I would like to refer back to many of the things you said, uh, uh, but I know that uh, the next speaker is rather short in time. Mr. Jadran Lenercic um, uh, has postponed his lecture at the university, but he will have to get there at some point. So uh, I'm uh, passing uh, it straight on, on, on him. Uh, Mr. Lenacic has been a, a wonderful speaker uh, time and again at, at our forums and this time I just proposed the title and he just accepted the challenge so I don't I don't really I, I I'm, I'm just going to sit back and, 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 and listen now so Yadran please the word is yours. Uh, thank you Yuri, um, Your Excellency the Ambassador, the friends, a little bit personal view, uh, my parents are from the western Slovenia uh, we call it Primorska, Southern Primorska, 
My mother spent her youth in Trieste. In 1956, the family settled in Copper, which then belonged to Yugoslavia, but uh, some of her relatives remained in Trieste, which was in Italy. Uh, at home, we lived uh, in the spirit that there is no border between Copper and Trieste. We visited each other every, every week. This was a tremendous, this was of tremendous cultural significance to me. I see it as a message to humanity even. I have been very fortunate in my life to have met many colleagues and friends in Italy, professors from Napoli up to Milan in every, in every uh, city. I was invited as visiting lecturer in Napoli, Casino, Ferrara, Milan, Turin. I must especially mention the University of Bologna, where I have been lecturing regularly since 92. And uh, this is why Bologna is almost my second home. Uh, I'm also a member of the Academy of Sciences of Bologna. I say this because I would like to let you know how much weight uh, the Italian Slovenian Forum had for me. Uh, this is a non-political association that is blind, as blind as, as I am, it does not see any border between Slovenia and Italy. Uh, our institute has uh, hosted Italian Slovenian business forum for several years, as it was mentioned in a row. We tried not to open the door only, but also to offer good working conditions, including coffee breaks. Uh, our conference today is different. Uh, it is the so-called BOC. BOC stands for bring your own coffee. So I have uh, Illy coffee today with Illy design as well. You know, this is what I, uh, I buy time to time, Illy design coffee uh, cups. For our institute, international networking, cooperation and exchange is of the highest importance. Uh, for the last two years, we have been employing more foreign doctoral and postdoc students than Slovenian ones. I like to emphasize that Joseph Stefan Institute is not a national institute. It is a European institute. Some international statistics uh, rank our institute among uh, the 8,200 uh, rated worldwide in the 102nd place in the world. Uh, what it means, it is enough to look at who is behind us. Very, very famous institutes are behind us. I became director of Joseph Stefan Institute in 2005. It is, the Institute had 770 employees at the time. The yesterday's number is 1,075, more than 300 more. It was possible only because of our European corporations, European projects, international collaborations of, of all kinds. We carry out more than 500 international projects per year. Only this year, we obtained three ERC projects, the most respected European projects of the highest caliber. Of course, I must add that after 15 years, I am leaving the position of the director of the Joseph Stefan Institute. I'm already working uh, over, over time uh, because of COVID. Uh, so at least I, I, at least I hope that um, I, I will finish uh, this, this position and I will dedicate myself again to research and, and art as well. The Italian Slovenian Business Forum has always strived to deal with the most current topics and uh, also today, and I sought uh, opportunities in in-depth collaboration where innovation and creativity played a special role. In doing so, it has found an important place in establishing collaboration between partners in Italy and Slovenia. Of course, we could have done more, uh, but we are all professionals. We are all overworked, overcrowded and sold out and the forum has no funding. And yet I can proudly say that it has certainly left a mark. As a scientist, unfortunately, I must also point out that science in our countries is not doing as well as science in Denmark, in Switzerland, in Austria and Germany, especially during the economic crisis funding for science in Slovenia fell sharply uh, too bad. You may remember that a few forums ago, I presented a comparison between Austria, Italy and Slovenia. 
it was clear that Austrians greatly increased uh, their investments in R&D during the crisis, while the Slovenians and Italians reduced the investments. It is also necessary to say that Austrian added value is significantly greater than the Italian. Slovenia is even worse. The same is with the GDP. Uh, the only way out of this loop is to increase public investment in R&D and attract private investments as well. Unfortunately, our countries have followed an opposite role, rule. It's 12 the, hours. The goal of the European Joint Research Area Initiative has been to equalize the contribution of all countries in science and technological de development of Europe. It has failed, uh, with some countries making even more progress while others are losing. We found ourselves among, among those below. This is the so-called Caesars effect. This is the concern of everyone in Europe today. It should be our concern in the first place. Regardless the mentioned, I am convinced that Slovenians and Italians are neighbors, very similar culturally. There are many opportunities for exchange and cooperation. With a little more effort, more ambitious, ambitions, more smart politics and visions, we could together reach much, much higher levels. COVID could be a chance to, uh, to change the trend, I believe. Finally, let me greet you once again and wish you a successful business forum. Uh, I wish you also a success work today and in the coming weeks. At the same time, I have to apologize because I have regular lectures now uh, at noon at the university and I will have to switch off uh, uh, immediately. So uh, let me finish with Italian. With Italian, we auguro tanta buona salute. In questi tempi abbiamo bisogno di molta cautela e buon senso. Grazie e buon lavoro. Hvala za besedo in vse dobro tudi slovencem. Uh, thank you very much. Grazie, Adran. Uh, uh, besides many things, Adran is the warrant of the forum. Uh, more precisely, the president of the uh, the, the chair of uh, of the committee of warrants, and he's been involved from the very beginning. One of the founders, and I would really like to thank you for the kind words you addressed uh, to, to to the forum and our joint endeavor that uh, that uh, has been. Um, uh, persistently um, accompanying uh, us uh, for uh, now almost 10 years uh, and of course we are going on with that uh, we understand that you uh, will have to leave us uh, uh, but you left some some questions open so uh, I think this is going to be the time for 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 a debate we will also invite other participants to uh, to join in I um, um, I thank you to all the uh, the speakers so far and um, of course one challenge is the uh, the, the the scissor effect and how can we uh, how can we close uh, the the scissor effect uh, with this uh, uh, with, with the opportunities that, that are arising i think yeah, you mentioned some some of that mr Vosner also mentioned some uh, the, the, would you like to intervene shortly on on on, on that uh, a little bit more would you like to deepen this uh, in this in the in the last seconds of of your presence here uh, yes, my lecture already started, so okay, <laughs> I, okay. it I hope maybe I can I can uh, come back in in one hour or something. I, I I'm not sure. Okay, maybe in the next session uh, okay. we we can involve you in the yeah. next session. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Bye, bye. Yeah, bye. 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 Yeah. Uh, Peter, maybe to you. The Caesar's effect. Well, um, you know, nothing will happen without appropriate investment. And, and, and Yadran was, I think, very clear. Um, uh, all the data support that claim. Um, I, I, haven't, I haven't gone in, in, in Italian numbers uh, in depth, uh, and I'm sure there are huge differences between the regions, but on, on Slovenian side, it really doesn't matter from which side you, you look at. Our investment in research uh, in R&D and innovation is lagging behind uh, significantly. And if that doesn't, that, I mean, to me, the, 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 the only way out is, is to significantly increase. And when I say significantly, the proposal with Professor Marag that I was referring to before, we're actually, uh, 
we, we, we grouped together everything to do with SMART, which is, includes R&D investment, innovation investments, uh, entrepreneurship investments, uh, including things like uh, uh, venture capital, when we, where we lag in, immensely, uh, things like uh, funding of proof of concept, but also things like digitalization of, of the industry, which is essential. Uh, human resources related to that and um, uh, and uh, a transition to circular economy. What we propose is that we increase the share of, of, of investments for these purposes from 33%, which is some which is the, which is the share that we have allocated in the current financial perspective to 44%. Um, that would mean that um, the amount of funding for these purposes that I mentioned would be more than doubled, it would be increased by 140%. And even with that, we would be significantly lagging behind, even before you take into account what other advanced countries will do with COVID funding. So it should be, the proposal should be, I think this is our last opportunity, um, but equally, we should change the perspective of how we do things. That's why my plea in the, you know, in, in the international forum like today, I think we should we should uh, uh, you know get more strategic uh, uh, and, and beyond these uh, projects of from today to tomorrow uh, and develop more 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 serious uh, uh, kind of joint collaborative uh, relationships. Before I was referring only to research and in de development innovation, but equally, for example, the culture and creative industries. There is actually a very good uh, project which was financed from cross corporate uh, cross border program. And that's something that should be obviously, I think, uh, uh, build upon, uh, you know, cultural and, and creative industries in our case, employ 7% of, 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 of our, our uh, of, of all employees. So it's, it's, it's significant as well. And I think that's a card, for example, where we could also uh, play jointly together. And it's only by this uh, uh, strategic redirection that I think we have, uh, that we stand a chance. Otherwise, I think the, 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 the transformations will be so radical and so quick that we simply won't be able to cope. Okay. Any other uh, reflection? I mean, that's obvious that the uh, the axis, uh, Italy, Slovenia. I mean, the uh, the let's say the, the southern horizontal axis of, of across the European Union can actually help get out of the scissors effect. Um, and uh, we we are working on that, and we uh, we. S I believe that the, the, the real challenge is how to pass on the next uh, level because the, when we look at the bilateral trade, things are going very well for many years. And, and there are many, many good uh, cases, but uh, we are now challenged and we have this great opportunity uh, to see the, uh, the COVID turmoil as a um, catalyst uh, for uh, embracing even more uh, the, the innovation side and, and, uh, and work uh, things out in, 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 in a way. So, uh, but I believe uh, that, I mean, there is some optimism. I don't said uh, the, EU, uh, the EU so far has failed because uh, the gaps uh, be between countries in, in, the, in their innovation capacity uh, has been widening still uh, on the other hand. Uh, it seems like the recovery uh, fund um, is is taking this into account in some in, in, in some way. How how do you feel? Not just Peter. I mean, I, I would also like to 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 ask this more openly to 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 the rest of the speakers. Um, and I, I from what I uh, I understood from Mr. Cerato and uh, Mrs. Marzoli, actually, it is going to to to. Um, uh, use the funding uh, in, in, in a similar manner as Slovenia, uh, having also a, a particularly the long, the long side. Any, any further comments to that? Okay, so I think we can, we can move. I, uh, we are actually now almost, you know, almost moving to, uh, to Trieste eh? yeah, because uh, we, uh, the, the next two uh, speakers um, come from, from there. Um, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Uh, Eddie Kraus uh, uh, to uh, take the floor. Mr. Kraus is a, a long time general manager of one of the most outstanding realities in, uh, um, in uh, Slovenia, um, the, um, uh, uh, the firm called Aquafil Slovenia, a part of Aquafil Group, 
uh, a real um, recognized uh, and confirmed champion in the circular uh, transformation um, um, an, an industry group that um, champions uh, in uh, regenerated uh, nylon uh, and caters uh, many of the most uh, important uh, fashion and textile uh, brands uh, and uh, producers of, um, of nylon products across uh, the world. Uh, Eddie is also uh, an entrepreneur. Um, uh, he's been involved in, in um, uh, uh, public um, um, roles uh, and uh, he has been above all a, a, a businessman representing Italian um, uh, um, uh, entrepreneurial presence in, in Slovenia for I would say for maybe the longest uh, uh, period uh, of, 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 of all around the table. So, Eddie, please, the word is yours. Uh, do, do we have you yes. still? Yes, yes, thank you. Could you could you hear me? Yes, could yes, but we don't we don't see you anymore. We saw you before. Because I can't I can't enter with the with the video. I don't know why. When you started to see the slides, I couldn't enter anymore with the video. Okay, but okay. I, I can't understand. But okay. Nevertheless, uh, you will get uh, then the the my my relation to my my presentation. So so yes. we will go. We will go did, did you want to share slides? Yes. Yes. Uh, now I will do this. Can, can you can you do that at least? Yes, I, I will do it. Okay. Okay. Well, 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 well. Thank you. Oh, just a moment. So we start with this trade. Could you see now? Uh, Could you see the yes, slides? Yes, but it's for not not the slides. You you took over uh, the screen, but not the slides, unfortunately. Aquafil Group, eighty thirty business forum is written. No, you no, don't no. see it. It's it's a uh, black. So it's something wrong with my with my laptop. Uh, if know. you like, you can you you can e email the slides to me, and I will I will run it for right, run them for oh. you. I can mail it to you. Yes, wait a minute. Eddie, if you like, you can you can uh, send send them to me, or we can uh, let uh, Andre go first. And uh... okay, I will try to do also without slides. Okay. It's, okay. It's, okay. It's, it's never the best. Okay. Uh, no. Now you can see it. No, still nothing. No, something is wrong. I will try it once, once again. Okay. Could you see now? Yes, now it's it works. It works. It works. Yeah, yeah, it works. We we see the slides. Okay. So, um, first of all, hello to everybody. Excellency Ambassador Yuri, um, dear friends. So I will present our group and um, generally what we are doing on the circular economy. And uh, uh, we are very proud, uh, let's say, because we started with this policy already in 2008. And we're developing the first the, the, our, then our plant of, of uh, regenerated nylon, Econil, which we had a big opening on 2011. So we are already in a very long time, if you are speaking about uh, circular economy uh, in this field and um, uh, we are very we are as i said we are very proud uh, our group uh, just to have some facts and figures it's almost uh, has almost 3000 employees it is 16 plants seven countries on three continents we are present and uh, you see the turnover about five, five, 550 millions and then a, a bit of another 70 of course this year 
will be will be more more uh, less about about these figures. Immediately about uh, globalization and the de- de- globalization in absolute terms uh, are two phenomena that cannot work in our opinion. So we can't we can't compare. Our idea when we see the seven countries on three continents was always to build our uh, our facilities, uh, production facilities in China, in United States, and in Europe, um, um, because we were aware that we have to produce uh, on for the local markets. So everything, uh, for example, what we are producing in China doesn't come to Europe. Uh, we are acting. Oppositely, sometimes when our friends uh, in in China they don't have uh, enough uh, capacity to produce, we are sending material from from Europe uh, and the same to the United States. So um, we see uh, uh, globalization uh, certainly uh, as a, as a, as a part of of the business, but uh, we see uh, globalization locally. It means that we produce for the local for the local. For the local markets, these are our applications. So we are based our pro- base product. It's uh, uh, polyamide six. It means nylon. Nylon is the name that everybody everybody knows. It's a commercial name, and we are in three in three fields. One is fiber fiber for carpet flooring, so so called BCF nylon, and you see the percentage. Then the fiber for fabrics, which is a nylon textile filament. And the third division is um, uh, plastic, so we, we do polymers for uh, end use as a, as a plastic. So if we speak about the circular economy, uh, and uh, so very very straight and very very simple, our resource uh, con- consumption. So we speak on the on the global uh, on the global way. It's uh, today 98 million tons, and will be if we don't act in a different way around 300 million tons in 2050. So you see also the the share of carbon carbon leakage. It's uh, is will increase on 26, and uh, which is also very 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 bad uh, data is that the 22 million tons added. Uh, Will be added of microfibers in the ocean. Um, this also because uh, the, the the fashion is changing. Um, the clothes are you can see for every day are often used for a very short period of time. Uh, the clothes are also very very cheap now to buy in, in Europe or in, in most. Uh, uh, progressive countries, so the people they are just buying and then and then throw away the the the, the final goods uh, to the landfill, or uh, and so they are polluting our soils, oceans, and the air. So this is the this is the not the just to represent uh, physically what does it mean every day. Uh, so one garbage truck of clothes is sent to landfill every second. So. Enough to fill one and a half Empire State Building building every day. So these are already uh, the materials that we are dealing. The materials which for us is starting uh, start started in 2011 started to be a raw material. So we have the fishing nets, we have the dumped carpets in landfills, and and you see here the quantities. 3.6 million tons of carpet and 640,000 tons of fishing nets. We are quite uh, proud because uh, parallelly with our technical um, uh, uh, improvement that we, that we did here in our plant in Ljubljana, we also uh, improved our commercial, commercial net around the world to collect this kind of, of uh, garbage, the, uh, which for us is... Uh, raw material and uh, uh, we invested a lot on this it's not easy also to buy to buy uh, because at the beginning uh, we we just get uh, for free now because slowly it's becoming uh, the, our uh, uh, 
people who are who are giving us this material, they understood that uh, that for us is is uh, it's uh, a raw material, so we uh, we uh, the market is growing, so we are now paying uh, also also this, this this garbage to get it, and just for to have an idea. Uh, we are importing in Slovenia and then producing nine, and then regenerating nine and about uh, twenty six thousand tons per year of this of this material. So this is the big uh, difference uh, that everybody is aware today. It's a linear linear economy, which uh, we know very well. It was for the last two hundred years. Then is recycling economy, which you can recycle a material two three times, but then Again, it goes back uh, to the to the to the garbage, and then to the landfill, and and this is the circular economy, which is uh, which is our uh, moment that to, it's our production. So it means that we can regenerate nylon every every four four steps to the from now to the with the same material from from now to the infinity. Uh, what we are also doing in in this uh, field, uh, because uh, mm, the raw material for nylon is uh, caprolactam, so-called caprolactam, coming out from the oil, uh, oil industry, from benzene, and then from cyclohexanone. Uh, we are also, uh, thanks to biobased industry from the European Union, we are with other 12 partners, and one European, one American, we are also developing a very, a very uh, impressive project where we will try to produce uh, this uh, caprolactam from from sugar. So it will be a bio caprolactam. It means that we will get, uh, we will uh, really close all the chain if, if we would be successful. So starting from the, the sugar and and then reproduce this nylon, to, as I told you, uh, many, many times. As, as it is necessary. So it's uh, uh, the pandemic. Uh, so the, the the situation is uh, uh, this is very shortly was a, what I explained t till now. So first is the reimagine how to start also to produce to produce um, uh, goods that has. Uh, that are in a certain way not costly, um, pre, not 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 so costly for our production to regenerate. Then uh, we we will collect this uh, this uh, uh, we will we will remake this uh, part and then regenerate uh, with here in Ljubljana and then also at the very beginning the rescue. So it 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 is uh, closing. So it's closing. The so uh, uh, what we are very very happy also that 38 percent of aquafil fiber turnover today is already already uh, uh, done and uh, as we said in 2011 when we had here the big opening with the presence of uh, the Italian ministry and the Slovenian ministry and the ambassadors uh, we uh, we said that our goal is to uh, to uh, to produce 100% regenerated and regenerable, regenerable nylon, which was very ambitious. So we slowly, slowly we are we are going on this on this way. So now, the, just as as always, a, a, a short a short sentence that can that can that you can just think about, and uh, and that's all. From, from my side, from our uh, regenerating uh, system, what I would like to point out is that uh, the European Union today, which uh, affects all our countries, Slovenia and, and also Italy, is working uh, on this uh, green economy. Um, we see that uh, the politicians are speaking a lot with the big uh, companies uh, around around Europe. Uh, as small companies that we are, we are not uh, we are not involved. Uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of experience. We can we can say uh, something, uh, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, both uh, the governments, Italian and, uh, and also Slovenian, will be ready when uh, we, with their ministry and, and, and their people who are involved in this preparation of this program will be ready 
also to hear us and to hear our uh, our opinions regarding regarding the future of this green economy, especially for this uh, uh, recyclable recyclable process, which uh, which can be seen uh, which can be seen from the from the different perspective and uh, not always is uh, not always is uh, a real circular economy. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Eddie. Um, uh, maybe just a, a, a short remark. Uh, it is really impressive, and I've been following uh, the, this development uh, with great respect for a, a few years. Uh, and uh, if I understand right, historically it was the uh, plant in Ljubljana that uh, first embraced um, the, the new technology. Is that correct? Yeah, we were we were at that time we were uh, in, in in competition with our colleagues in Italy with our plant in Italy, uh, where where to do this plant. Uh, and uh, I must say what I'm always saying that the uh, Slovenian government uh, we we presented this project to the Slovenian to the Slovenian government at this time the ministry was uh, uh, Mrs. Radic the Mrs. for for. Uh, Development of economy and uh, and uh, uh, she understood uh, very well uh, the, the the and 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 she also foresee this uh, this uh, what was this our our project and uh, and he presented to the board of ministry and we get uh, uh, on the 70 million euros uh, investment we get 3.3 uh, million euros uh, uh, free of charge. Uh, Help from the from the Slovenian government. So uh, um, so when uh, so in, on, in this way we won uh, the competition with our Italian colleague in in uh, here in Slovenia. And um, uh, I was at the time very happy because uh, we we gave also to to this uh, plant here uh, a real future. Because if we remained only on the textile business should be very difficult uh, because of the competition that we had from from china and other countries uh, very interesting and a very good lesson uh, uh, but uh, nevertheless um, the journey of uh, aquafil group towards uh, sustainability is um, even much uh, uh, broader and it uh, it, it started uh, very actively some 15 years ago, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these are not uh, things you do in, in in two seasons, right? No, this is uh, this is a uh, this is a long journey. Uh, this must be pointed out for everybody who is uh, uh, who wants uh, who wants to start and to go on this on this way. It's a long uh, journey. Uh, you have to understand. Uh, what is your product? How it can be implemented as a, as a recyclable or better as as a regenerated? Um, you must start um, uh, with slowly because it means also a lot of investment. But um, at the end, uh, I think that uh, also with the with uh, with so so nominated helps that that uh, the European Union and through the states will give to these companies. I think that uh, a lot. Uh, a lot could be done. Uh, of course, uh, um, it must. Uh, it depends also on the market. In my opinion, I think, and and this is um, uh, how we say uh, a sort of of a cultural approach on the on the social so on, in the social impact that um, we as a consumer, all of us, uh, we must be ready also to spend. A little bit more for a good uh, which is made from the regenerated material because it's for the moment it's still because of the, of the high investment and so on it's still it's still um, more expensive but uh, uh, the market could, could be the real player who can who can change this attitude and who who then can uh, force uh, all the all the companies to go on the on the on the circular economy. Thank you very much. There would be many more questions. We are li a little short in time, so I would not like uh, to um, deprive uh, the last speaker of the uh, of the day, and Andrei Schick, uh, the director of uh, the Slovenian Regional uh, Economic Association from Trieste. 
um, uh, thank you. with whom we have been working. Thank you very much, Eddie, in, indeed. Thank you, uh, thank you. Just, just to, to say one, once more, uh, there will be um, uh, sustainable materials in the focus on, on the next session on the 28th of October, but uh, mm -hmm. we wanted to expose Aquafield as a, as, as a champion in, in this field, and uh, we really wanted to go into the topic uh, thanks to, to, to your uh, presentation, uh, and uh, we, we really, very much appreciate it. Um, uh, coming back to Andre, uh, we have uh, been working together now on this uh, with, uh, with, with him and his team, and uh, um, it's been a, an important contribution indeed. Uh, so I would like you to, to um, start and also have a, 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 please take the opportunity to introduce what, what comes next in the next two uh, sessions, please. Uh, but you are still muted, I think. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm basically going to talk about the, the last session, uh, the one about uh, tourism, uh, which uh, we're going to, uh, to organize directly. So uh, when we were told about this initiative, we were very glad to have an occasion to talk about our idea regarding tourism development in this uh, area. So uh, we are very happy indeed to give within the program of the 8th Italian Business Forum 2020 our contribution to the uh, Italian Embassy in Ljubljana, the ICE office, the Italian Cultural Institute, and the Italian Union Forum. So I would uh, first of all like to bring our greetings uh, also on behalf of uh, our president, uh, Robert Frandolich, uh, to His Excellency, the Ambassador of Italy, Carlo Campanile, to the head of each Ljubljana, my dear friend Serenina Marzoli, to Stefano Cerato, director of the Italian Cultural Institute in Ljubljana, and of course, last but not least, the organizer of the event, uh, Yuri Giacomelli. So, uh, for those who don't know us, Slovensko Dženo Gospodarsko Združenje, Union Regional Economica Slovena, or in English, the Slovene Regional Economic Association of the Friuli Venezia Giulia, uh, has been established back in uh, 1946 as the organization representing the entrepreneurs of the Slovene minority in Italy. In all those uh, years, uh, next year, uh, we are going to celebrate 75 years of activity. We have grown into one of the most uh, recognizable, uh, I guess, association in this region. And by being rooted uh, both in Italy and in Slovenia, uh, probably the most active one in the cross-border area between the two, uh, the two countries. So among the sectors in which our entrepreneurs are involved, tourism is one of the most prominent. We have been talking about a common and integrated approach to the development of this sector for at least 15 years since the Republic, uh, the Republic of Slovenia became a member of the European uh, Union. Uh, it's not only about the homogeneous uh, cross-border regions. I mean, uh, Istra, Istria, uh, Kras, Carso, uh, Berda, Colio, and so on, which are, of course, interesting on their own. I remember the first time I met uh, Yuri Giacomelli uh, when he was among the organizers of a very interesting event in the main hall of the Camera di Commercio di Trieste, uh, in Trieste, it was some 20 years ago. And one of the speakers, unfortunately, I don't remember uh, his name right now, uh, gave us a lecture about the habits of the tourists staying for a week in a touristic town like uh, Grado or Vignano. Well, uh, nobody, even with the best conditions a touristic facility can offer, is going to tie them down in a hotel for the time of their stay. In fact, usually they are going to tour an area with a radius of 100 of, uh, or 150 uh, kilometers. So we have to realize that we're living and working in an amazing territory. When in a mere uh, 100 kilometers, you leave the shores of the North Adriatic to reach the Alps with everything that sits uh, that stays in the middle or, uh, or beyond. And Trieste, which could be considered the center of this territory, is only a good hour away of one of the world's most important touristic, uh, touristic attractors, Venice, uh, which was 
mentioned before today by, uh, if I remember well, by Peter Vost. Uh, with these assumptions, it is our opinion that it's about time to start working on a North Adriatic touristic macro area, which should include, to begin with, the whole territory of Slovenia, and on the other side, uh, Fiorentina Giulia, and at least part of Veneto. From this starting point, we should then involve also Carinthia in Austria and the Eastern region uh, in Croatia. Given these conditions, it was a very interesting challenge for us when we were asked to organize a session about the touristic sector. You already know that it's planned for the 5th of uh, November and uh, unfortunately in the same online mode as today. But however, this online mode is also an interesting cue for the very title we have uh, chosen for the event, uh, European Union Recovery Through Sustainable Cross-Border Tourism. Now, we all know that we usually need a shocking crisis to actually start with the changes we have already accepted for a long time as unavoidable. The COVID-19 crisis forces everybody in the field of tourism to rethink his approach. The sector, which has survived for a year on a mainly domestic public, is going to experience great changes in the future, and this is the challenge operators and policymakers are facing. These are, of course, the subjects that we are going to involve in the event of the 5th of November. We are looking for some among the best touristic operator, operators in this area, and they are going to share with us their past experiences, their view, and outlook on the present crisis, and also their ideas and uh, recipes about the future development of the cross-border tourism. The whole spectrum has been evolved from the classical uh, touristic uh, enterprises to the producers, I mean, winemakers, uh, fish farmers, and so on, who are giving us the edge we need to be competitive as a territory that focus on quality and recognizability. There are also the policymakers. Develop an integrated touristic project in a cross border territory, you have to agree on common policies and drop some of the one sided approaches, which could be very popular in politics. It takes some amount of, of courage and a strategy with long term goals instead of small results reachable in a shorter time, but uh, of course appealing in terms of uh, consensus. If we are talking of the first step, the involvement of Slovenia and Italy, I mean, through Venezia, Giulia and Veneto, we already have the tool we need to trigger a new common strategy. The Italy-Slovenia Interreg program 2021-2027 is under development, and it takes only some political will to imagine and accept the idea of a top-down strategic project dedicated to this uh, issue. If we're looking for a broader approach, with the involvement of Carinthia and the Istra, Istria region, we should face the fact we have several bilateral uh, programs, but not a multilateral European program to cover the entire Alpe Adria region. There again, it's up to the policymakers to find an agreement in the short term, for example, uh, with mirroring projects, respectively, on the single bilateral programs involving the four countries, or far better, in my opinion, in the middle term, the institution of a small Alpe Adria multilateral program, in our opinion, to be dedicated exclusively to the touristic sector. These are, of course, our thoughts and our ideas, and we're sure that the participants in our planned session will give us all a complete view on these issues and a starting point for a strategy that we need to, to adopt. So I really hope to see you on the 5th of November with our session dedicated to EU recovery through sustainable cross-border tourism. And so thank you for your attention. And of course, um, I'm at your uh, disposal for any, for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, very insightful. Actually, in many ways, you replied to the challenge that uh, Peter Wosner exposed uh, in his speech, uh, saying that uh, uh, we 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 can take big um, and um, yes uh, we, indeed we are uh, we are going to depart from 
champions that uh, apparently represent uh, small business, but they are a part of a very big business, uh, uh, a part of um, a region that, that doesn't start or end anywhere. It's uh, it, it, we, we, we live in a very connected uh, world and uh, the, particularly the context of the uh, Interact program or the next, uh, the next um, horizon of the Interact uh, program can be one such uh, um, playground uh, to uh, implement this wider, wider uh, thinking and, um, and um, uh, continue fostering uh, the exchange in, in the tourism sector, that's, that, that's for sure. Um, we have come to uh, the conclusion of our program. As uh, mentioned at the beginning, it's important to be focused when we are online. So I think we, we have more than accomplished uh, this. We were we, we, today we focused on a big picture. We laid a ground for a further debate. I think we more than justified the need to be together in these uh, very uncertain times. Uh, um, I mean, uh, I, I briefly read uh, the news there has been a very sad record of, of um, uh, new um, infections in Slovenia uh, uh, from a uh, book from yesterday. Uh, the, the number is uh, exceeds 700. Uh, I have read the Italian uh, papers. Uh, there has been, I mean, similar, uh, there have been similar warnings uh, out there. So uh, this uh, actually has led me to, 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 to ask a question, are we sure about the, the downturns and the upturns? What we are sure uh, about is that we have um, we have a possibility to shape our future, as as, as Peter Vostner said. There are fun there's funding. The, there are means that we have. We don't have everything, but we have something, and it really depends what we will do uh, uh, with, with all that, uh, because there will be some more uncertainty, um, and I would not like to see uh, really personally uh, to uh, to see um, uh, what we have seen in. Spring, you know, um, uh, the, the, uh, the situation that in which we were forced to stay apart, uh, something that we were not used to, something that was very un, um, uh, anachronic to, to, to all of us. And um, I think we started very well. I think we, we, have, um, uh, we, we have a good reason to, to, to continue. Uh, the next uh, session will be held uh, on the 28th. Um, uh, you all will be served uh, by um, email um, and through social media uh, with uh, the program, with uh, excellent speakers. There will be representatives of Slovenian uh, innovation in, uh, partnerships involved uh, in that. There will be several um, uh, excellent Itali Italian companies uh, represented on the program, including uh, Lucy Plast from, um, from Perugia, um, the, um, the Luca group from from Luca and uh, and and, and uh, some others, um, Area Science Park from Trieste, um, etc. Et and um, we are awaiting a very interesting uh, exchange uh, of uh, of uh, proposals actually for how to uh, to build connections in uh, the area of uh, sustainable materials, which can be uh, a starting point. Uh, for, for doing more in, in the industrial uh, sector. On the, on the 5th of November, uh, we uh, will get together again on the topic uh, that was just introduced by, by Andre um, on the topic of uh, cross-border sustainable tourism. So there's a lot to come. My last uh, thought is please, let's, let's uh, continue do, uh, with this experiment. This is an experiment. Um, uh, and uh, we will be happy to continue improving this way of uh, th this dialogue. And uh, the, the most, uh, um, uh, our, our greatest award at the end could be that we get an idea for the third, for the fourth session and, uh, and, uh, and continue our efforts to bring businesses together, to bring actors uh, from uh, Italy and Slovenia together and um, to uh, uh, continue to uh, increase uh, um, our cooperation in uh, our uh, shared European uh, context. Thank you again. Have yeah. a good rest of the day. And uh, yeah, please, I, I'm, I'm, I'm passing it to the ambassador, please. <laughs> no, uh, thank you very much. Um, I, I, uh, that's my first experience as participant to the Italian Business Forum. 
So um, let me uh, pay tribute to, to all uh, participants, to you for the, uh, the quality of the interventions. I, I mean, I was really impressed by the, um, uh, uh, the content uh, and, and the comments, um, uh, the importance in, uh, of the topics raised during our uh, two hours and a half uh, uh, discussions today. Um, uh, so I, I, I'm really impressed. I, I took notes that are some keen, some um, issues that deserves, of course, uh, to be uh, analyzed and 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 uh, very carefully uh, considered. Um, I just wanted to 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 have that this exercise is also uh, in line with. Uh, may I say in a sort of uh, relaunch of the bilateral uh, uh, relations, um, we have uh, a, a political agenda, which is very, very busy. Um, probably you are aware that um, uh, on the 9th of December, uh, the uh, Italy-Slovenia Interministerial Committee has been convened uh, in Rome, uh, the, the, the last session uh, took place in 2017. So uh, that's an important uh, step. Um, um, I mean, we, tomorrow, tomorrow, the, the president of the national, the Slovenian National Assembly, uh, Zorgic, will, will be uh, uh, welcomed in Italy uh, by the uh, Italian authorities. Uh, um, and uh, on, 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 I think on, uh, yes, on, on Friday, uh, uh, we'll be hosting the, your Minister of Defense. Uh, I mean, there are, uh, and we are working uh, hard also on other important uh, appointments. So, um, I mean, this really, I, I, I have the perception that um, there is an increasing attention towards uh, Slovenia and, and there's a common will to, uh, to uh, work on, on, on our relations. And, 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 and I think that um, uh, increasing the bilateral cooperation is an important asset for both uh, countries and, and for, for uh, peoples, Italian Slovenian peoples, we are talking about peoples, of course. So many, many thanks. I'm, I'm eager to also to um, assist to this, the, 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 uh, the following sessions of, of this exercise. And, and uh, uh, I mean, it's my intention also to, uh, to reinforce uh, and so also probably widen the scope of our cooperation or the cooperation with the Italian business uh, uh, forum. Thank you. Thank you to you, uh, Mr. Giacomelli, and thank you um, and my great compliments to all the participants for, for their uh, presence and their contribution to the success of this uh, eighth edition of the Italian business forum. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, thank you, Ambassador Campanile. And, um... I'm looking forward to meeting you all on, on the 28th. Uh, have a good rest of the day um, and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.